Good morning. Welcome to Grace Church. We're glad to have you all here. Um, just a couple announcements this morning. A reminder, there is that um, request from the intermediate school to bring those supplies for the personal needs cart at school. So there's a wire basket out in the Welcome Center where you can put items. Um, and there's also a list of the types of things they're looking for. We'll take that basket there at the beginning of the school year. Um, also, there's a new women's Bible study starting. It's going to be a five-week study starting Wednesday, July 17th. Um, it's called Worthy, Embracing Your Identity in Christ. There is information on your weekly update, and there's a sign-up sheet at the Welcome Center for that. Um, and then I'm going to let Lisa and Steve talk about Vacation Bible School, I think. Hey, th thank you. Um, yeah, we want to talk about some uh, vacation Bible schools coming up. Lisa's going to talk about the one if the the, uh, the one that's open to all the church, but I'm going to talk about the one we're doing for the TLC uh, Learning Center. If you don't know where that's at, it's down the street here, right, right next to Pantry Pride, and we've had the honor of doing weekly Bible lessons there since since January, but we had a normal VBS l last year, and several of the students there came to the VBS and talking to some of the teachers and the owners, they, they said, would you be willing to do a VBS for just our students? And it, and it was a great opportunity, so that'll be coming up here, not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. It's gonna be on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning from nine to 11, and there's gonna be 70 plus kids that are gonna walk up here, and I've been going there ev every week, and most of those kids do not have a home church. So it's gonna be a real blessing, and we had a real great, uh, um, lesson. Amy Keller is, is going to be teaching it. I'm going to be in charge of doing the science project. I hope I don't blow up the church in that, but hey, hey, we just have to see. But but we need help with that. We need help with some of the games or crafts. I know it's during the day a, a, a lot of you people work, but if anybody can help even just one day from 9 to 11, there's a sign-up sheet there. It should be a great time to minister to a lot, a lot of young kids. And now I'm going to turn it over to the girl with the props. Okay, <laughs> really? Okay, so all week long he's talked about his Bible school and my Bible school, and there's a little bit of a competition. So we already know he's got 77 kids. They're an automatic. Um, so July 8th through 11th, we need 80 kids here so that uh, my Bible school does better than his Bible school. No, I'm teasing. Um, okay, so I do have some props. Um, we have a couple things that we still need help with. So the first is we still need help with games. So that's from 6 to 8, July 8th through 11th. If you like um, playing games with kids, then we need your help. Um, we also have one marketplace um, the synagogue school where you will put together this little box and paint it a little bit um, and there's a whole packet of information for that so we still need a couple people for that um, we've also talked about um, the need for um, those manual drills so Steve found this you can see it's really old but this is what we need um, for the kids to make one of their uh, their little toy sheep in the um, in the carpentry. Um, so if you have any of these, we need about eight. I think we have three. So that would be helpful. And then how many of you know someone between kindergarten and sixth grade? Entering kindergarten to sixth grade, raise your hand. If you know someone who doesn't belong to this church, okay? Have you invited them to Bible school? Okay, so here's, we've had these flyers in the back, and um, they're still the same pile back there. So if you would take one and pass them, so everybody has one, so wherever you are, um, you know, people have their phones, you can hand it to them, or if you want to just keep one and have them take a picture of it. Um, I'm not sure, do you know how many people we have registered so far? So it was four last week, and I think they're my four grandchildren. 
So come on, come on, church. Um, we need to, you know, for for planning purposes, but really we want to just pack out this place so we can love on kids. So, thank you. And now you're invited to prepare your hearts for worship as the prelude is played. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, thank you for being in this place, meeting us here. Before we even thought about coming, you were expecting us. And Father, that feels so good to walk into your house knowing that you desire us to be here with you, that you desire our presence and that you are eagerly waiting to meet us. So Father, we come here to praise you, to lift our voices to you, to sing to you, to, to um, read your word and to hear your message. So, Father, we pray that we can put ourselves aside. We can pray what happened last week aside and what's happening this week. And, Father, for this time that we can focus fully on you, fully on who you are in our lives. And, Father, we know that that then affects what happened last week and what happens next week. But we need to take this time to refresh, renew, and bring more of you into our lives with nothing else distracting us and focusing fully on you. So hear our praises. Rejoice in what we sing to you, and may it bring you great joy. But Father, may it touch us as you, we know that you always do, as the Holy Spirit works in our heart and in our mind to create this, this place of being that isn't available anywhere else but in your presence. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. For all those people watching online, we welcome you here this morning. Let's stand as we enter into our time of worship. And as we do, let's remember this. It's not about us. It's never about us. It's about the kingdom. It's about Jesus. It's about who he is and what he does. He tells the sun to rise every morning. Amen? Amen. Who tells the sun to rise every morning? Who colors the sky with the shades of his glory? Wakes us with mercy and love. Jesus does. Who holds the orphan, comforts the widow, cries for injustice, feels every song, carries the pain of his children, Jesus dies. So we sing praise to the Father who gave us the Son, praise to the Spirit who's living in us when I was a sinner. Save me from who I was, cause that's what Jesus does. Who understands the heart of a sinner, showers his grace over all our mistakes, washes us clean with his blood, Jesus does. 
sings the song of sweet forgiveness who stole the keys to hell and the grave So we sing praise to the Father who gave us the Son. Praise to the Spirit who's living in us. And I was a sinner, save me from who I was. Cause that's what Jesus does. Oh, what a friend, oh, what a Savior. Praise to the Spirit who's living in us. When I was a sinner, He saved me from who I was. So we sing. So we sing praise to the Father who gave us the Son. Praise to the Spirit who's living in us. When I was a sinner, He saved me from who I was. what Jesus does. I've got a friend closer than a brother. There is no judgment. Oh, how he loves me. I've got my strength. He is my portion. With me in the valley, with me in the fire, with me in the storm.
Savior He is. What a Father, what a friend, what a Savior He is. What a Father, what a friend, what a Savior He is. What a Father, what a friend, what a Savior.
of this earth, the things that we deal with every single day become shadows in your presence. Father, help us to search your heart. Help us to just be engulfed by your presence and love. And I worship you. I worship you. Oh, the reason I live is to worship you. And I worship you. The children may go back to um, children's rooms and wherever they may um, find to go where there's an adult supervision. <laughs> hey, you're on that side of the church. I almost didn't recognize you. <laughs> I have many prayer requests this, this morning. This evening, where'd that come? This morning. Um, Continue to pr pray for Nikki Perrin as she um, has had her first eye surgery and she'll be getting ready for her second eye surgery soon. Um, pray for, pray for a um, family. Um, the mom is Carla and she lost her son in a car accident over the weekend. Please keep her and the family in your prayers. Um, the family of Randy Shear, he lost his home in a fire um, last week, I believe. Please keep him in your prayers, the family in your prayers. Um, Mandy's mom, um, Lillian, Lillian, Lily and Lily and Mackenzie's other grandma fell and uh, has injured herself. Sandy is her name. Sandy, Sandy yep, yeah, she is um, her her right sh shoulder and her left knee. I don't know how you do that, Becky. <laughs> don't find out. <laughs> don't experiment, okay? Yeah, so keep Sandy in your prayers. Um, also, Julius has asked for a speci specific prayer request. Number one, peace of mind. I'm sure it's that peace that comes from God, that only God can provide, and also um, better communication from the commanding officer. Um, Shane, we were praying for Shane, Vicki's son, and he has had his back surgery two weeks out, and he's feeling so much better than before the surgery. Praise be to God, that doesn't always happen with back surgery. And Cade, baby Cade, that um, was born at 25 weeks, uh, is now 28 weeks. <laughs> he, has, he has had two surgeries and is holding his own. 
and pray for his breathing to improve, but he is eating, they're giving him some, form, some breast milk now, and so he is starting to progress. So um, that's actually, that's a praise. I mean, he's doing, he's, he's, he's doing, so that's good. Um, also a praise, um, Carol, um, Donna's sister that we had prayed for that, had, that has cancer, she was able to go to her granddaughter's graduation party out at the lake. And so that was great news about the first time she's been out in quite a while, other than doctor appointments. And so that was, that's a praise. And Donna was thrilled to see her, and they had a little reunion with sisters. And, and Lord, we give you the glory when that happens. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. I will say that, you know, we prayed for someone last Sunday, and they're here this Sunday. So praise be to God, and we hope that that continues um, love seeing her face. Let's pray. God, I'm overwhelmed by who you are. Overwhelmed by how you listen to our prayers. Overwhelmed by the goodness that you show, the love, the grace, the mercy, and all those things that you lavish on us day in and day out. All those things we don't deserve but because of your love, your great love, your unconditional love, you pour them down on us over and over again. And Lord, we are so thankful. So thankful. Forgive us when we don't display that thankfulness, that gratitude for, for who you are. Forgive us, Lord, when we think that we make all this happen on our own and and we may or may not need you, or sometimes in really tough situations we need you, but most of the time we're okay. Forgive us, Lord, because we cannot do life, we cannot do day to day without you. Oh, we might be able to, but it's not gonna be good. In the end, it will not be good. Father, when we do things our own way, it only ends up in separation from you. And the name for that is death, <laughs> a spiritual death. So Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for working in each one of us. Thank you for, for giving us your attention and your, and, your, um, and your love. Thank you for reaching out to us, to grabbing hold of us, to to hitting us over the head or however it is, Lord, that you get our attention. Perhaps spilling coffee on ourselves, I don't know. But Lord, we know that you will get our attention and we are thankful for that. You heard the prayers of the congregation. You heard the praise of your congregation. You know those who need a healing touch. You know those who need a spiritual touch. You know those who need a, an emotional touch from you, that touch that only you can provide, the peace, the understanding, the, the, um, the comfort, the healing that only you can provide. For Nikki and Carla and her family and Julius and for Randy and his family and Sandy, we lift them up to you, Lord, knowing that you are there with them. May they feel your presence in a very mighty way, O oh Lord. We praise you for Shane's um, surgery coming out well. We know that you have a touch in that. And Father, we pray that it brings him spiritually closer to you as he gains his physical strength. We thank you that Carol got to share those moments with her granddaughter and her sisters and her family. And Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. All great things you have done. We ask for continued healing for Cade, for his breathing to get better and better every day. And for each day, your strength to empower him in that little body of his. Father, we are grateful to be a part of your family. We are grateful that you have given us Grace Church and you have given us love to, um, to love each other. And Father, may we not shy away from inviting people in because 
this is what it's all about. Spending time with you. Hearing about you. Growing closer to you. This is life. This is real life. This is the real deal. Right here. Sitting in your presence. Knowing you're here. Giving you praise. Giving you glory. Worshiping you. And saying thank you. Thank you for being our God and thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. We pray in his name and all God's people said, amen. Good morning. This looks... A lot different from up here. <laughs> I, I like it, though. I like the arrangement. Um, you moved me in that prayer to give some more thanks. So um, a few weeks ago, you guys re remember that I, Ange and I, pleaded for your sign-ups back there. And I happened to be walking back in and past the thing and... Um, greeters, their sheet is completely full. Ushers, we've now moved second place. There's only a few slots left. And hospitality still needs some help. But thanks for everybody that has signed up. Those things have improved. You know, that's what does help us grow and serve and love. And also thanks to the worship team because... You reminded me how simple it is, um, you know, the reason we live is that simple, is to worship him. And how thankful I am for a happy Father's Day, because he is our father. And it moved me thinking of that because in his likeness, in his image, you know, I'm lucky enough to have that title. Share that. So thanks for that. Today we read Genesis 32, verses 22 through 28. Jacob wrestles with God. During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives his two servant wives, and his eleven sons, and crossed the Jabuk River. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all of his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of socket. Then the man said, Let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that on every page of your word we find a lesson, we find truth, and we find a way to draw closer to you. Wow, what a marvelous plan you've had with your book, with your word, with the Bible that you have made so readily available to us. Father, help us through the power of the Holy Spirit to understand your message this morning. Amen. So last night, Joe and I went to JT's to eat dinner, <laughs> and he couldn't eat. If you've ever been out there, they have fish and fries, and it's a big portion, and he couldn't eat all of that that was on his plate. It was a big portion. So the waitress was kind of walking by, and she looked over, and she said, I thought it was kind of odd, Joe didn't eat everything on his plate, but she said, um, oh, do you want a box? And he looked at it, and he said, mm, no, but I'll wrestle you for it.
<laughs> okay, box. So that leads us into our scripture this morning. <laughs> Joe thought I lost my mind for a moment because we did not go to JT's for dinner last night. But the lead character, no. <laughs> the lead character in this story, Jacob, probably didn't care if he ever wrestled again or not. However, this wrestling match was one of the most meaningful moments in his life. This is when Jacob's conversion took place. If Jacob stood before his Jewish friends and gave his testimony, this would have been the pinnacle of his conversion story, the night he wrestled with God. The moment he surrendered his life to God. And Steve, WWG means wrestling with God. I see you looking. <laughs> so let's take a brief journey through Jacob's life up to this point. I guess it's not as brief as I anticipated it when I first wrote that sentence, but let's take a look at Jacob's life up to this point. He is the grandson of Abraham and Sarah. They are, Abraham and Sarah gave birth to Isaac. If you remember, Abraham was 99, I believe, when Sarah became pregnant. She was 89 or 90 when she had the baby who was Isaac. And then Isaac married uh, Rebekah, and they had two sons, Esau and Jacob. They were twins. And these twins jostled among themselves in the womb, so much so that Rebekah went to the Lord and asked, what in the world is going on inside here? And God responded, and we read of it in Genesis 25, 23. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two people from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Remember that. The first baby out was named Esau because he was red, and he was, his whole body was like a hairy garment. <laughs> Does your image go to the Grinch? That's what I immediately <laughs> think of. <laughs> Only he was green in his whole body. So um, Esau, he was red and hairy. And um, as the firstborn, he was expected to receive both the birthright and the blessing. Because people in ancient cultures had attached great value to the oldest son. And sometimes that's still in our culture today. I know, yeah. Assigning him distinct benefits and obligations. The firstborn son became the primary heir of the family, and he would serve as the leader of the family if something would happen to the father. And younger siblings would serve him, the oldest. Baby number two came out, and he was grasping the heel of the older one, and they named this baby Jacob because it means grasp the heel. And Jacob was the second born, and therefore he should have served the older son, but God, he had declared the older would serve the younger. Esau became a skillful hunter. He loved the great outdoors. Jacob was quiet. He stayed close to home. God's word tells us that Isaac loved Esau or favored Esau, and Rebekah loved or favored Jacob. So one day, Esau came home from a full day of hunting, and Jacob was in the kitchen. He liked to stay close to home, remember? And he was in the kitchen, and he was making stew. Well, it smelled so good that Esau begged for some. He was famished. And Jacob said, first, sell me your birthright. Birthright in that day meant that the oldest would receive, would receive twice as much property as any other son, and he would become the head of the family when the father died, as we talked about. A birthright could be legally sold, but it was a sacred gift, and it shouldn't be done so lightly. But Esau was too hungry at that moment to worry about his birthright. In a bit of dramatic fashion, Esau said, I'm about to die. What good is my birthright if I don't live to, have, to enjoy it? And Jacob responded, before I give you any stew, swear to me that you will sell me your birthright. And Esau did. Many years later, when their dad Isaac was very old and his eyes could no longer see, he called for his favorite son, 
Esau. And he asked Esau to do one last thing for him because before he died. He said, go hunt some wild game for me, and then bring it back and prepare it just the way I like it. And when you bring it to me, I will give you my blessing before I die. Rebecca, who loved Jacob, heard all of this, and she set Jacob to she set Jacob up to deceive to deceive Isaac, well, and Esau too. But Jacob ended up receiving the blessing instead of Esau. You can read about that in Genesis. The blessing included power and possessions and land for generations to come. Jacob followed his mom, Rebekah's instructions, deceived his dad into thinking he was Esau, and he received his father's blessing instead of Esau. Well, Esau was livid, as you can imagine. He was ticked off when he found out. He said, my brother is a deceiver. And he t- first he took my birthright. He didn't take his birthright. He gave him his birthright. And now he took my blessing. That he did take. He found comfort. Esau found comfort in devising this elaborate plan to kill Jacob. That's what made him... That's what made him live. Revenge. He was living for revenge. Rebecca pers- persuaded Jacob to flee to Haran to her brother Laban. So Jacob took off for Haran. He stopped for the night and he began to sleep. And he had a dream, his first of two life-changing encounters with God. It was a definite turning point for Jacob. God's promise to Abraham and Isaac, which we know is to give him the promised land and you and the generations after you would live in this land and you would be my people. He now expanded that to Jacob and his offspring. In Genesis 28, 20 to 22, we read Jacob made a vow to God. And perhaps you've made a similar vow. It starts out, if. (laughs) If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the, Lord will be, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. If we reread that in trust, if we have placed our trust in God, this is how it would read, God is with me and will watch over me on this journey I'm taking. He will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's home. So the Lord is my God, and I will set up this stone as a pillar for the Father's house. And all that he gives me, I will give a tenth. See the difference? (laughs) I think when we first start out our vows to God or our, our, um, you know, we make deals with God, they start out with if. If you, okay, so once that starts, if you start out talking to God with if, start out with trust. Start out with, I know you will. I know you are here. I know that you're listening. So Jacob continued his journey, and coming to the outskirts of Haran, the land of Rebekah's brother, he met his uncle Laban. Laban is um, his mom's brother. The story of Jacob and his wives is quite interesting. You can put down your harlequin romance and look at Genesis 29 and 30, and um, you will get quite a story. To summarize 29 and 30, Jacob fell in love with Rachel, Laban's daughter. He worked seven years to win her hand in marriage. So they had a wedding night, and there is much wine drank, and there is a good time had, and it lasts sometimes for a week, and it's a big celebration for a wedding. And, and then there's the wedding night, and the, wed- the marriage is consummated, and Jacob wakes up in the morning, and that's not, Ra- that's not Rachel, that's Leah beside him, the oldest sister, because the father said, we don't marry the younger sister before we marry off the older sister. So now Jacob is married to Leah, which he didn't even, he didn't even, wasn't even in his plan whatsoever. And so now he's married to Leah and Laban says, well, you can work seven more years for the one you really love, Rachel. So he works seven more years and he gets the love of his life, 
Rachel. He has worked now 14 years for his love. And you men have trouble doing dishes. <laughs> Some of you. <laughs> so a full-on competition of having sons for Jacob and Sue's. Combined, <laughs> you heard, I heard um, Derek kind of hesitate. He said he took us two wa two wives, <laughs> but that wasn't all. He had two wives. He had two female servants, and together, all four of those women gave him 12 sons and probably a ton of girls that no one counted. 20 years after Jacob had left his, left his father's home in Canaan, God said to Jacob, go back to the land your father gave you. Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. By the way, the reason it said he took his 11 sons and headed out is because Benjamin, the youngest, had not been born and was born on the journey. And at that time, Rachel died in childbirth. But at this time, he gathered his wives, his concubines, his children, all of his possessions, and he headed back to his father's land, the land that had been originally promised to Abraham and all of his offspring after him, and now was to be given to Jacob. And Jacob's thought went to Esau 20 years later, and he's thinking, hmm, wonder if he's still mad. I wonder if he's um, still dreaming of revenge. Is he still dreaming every night about killing me? So Jacob devised an extravagant plan to win favor with Esau. Hmm. Perhaps he could have just trusted God. But he devised a plan to win favor with Esau, and he sent messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir. That's where Esau had settled. He instructed the messengers to give his brother this message. Your servant Jacob says, I have been staying with Laban and have remained there until now. I have cattle and donkeys, sheep and goats, male and female servants. Now I am sending this message to my Lord, not capital L, Lord, but Lord, lower, like my Lord, like you are in charge here and I'm, I'm giving to you, my Lord, that I may find favor in your eyes. And when the messengers came back, they told Jacob, Esau's coming to meet you with 400 men. In great fear and distress, Jacob divided his people and all of his animals into two groups. His thought is, if Esau comes and, and attacks one group, the other group may escape. Jacob prayed to God, save me and my family from my brother. Jacob then selected a small gift for his brother. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, and 10 male donkeys. And he sent them out in the care of his servants to meet his brother. And when they met Esau, they were to tell him, these are gifts from Jacob, he is coming behind us. The servants left camp and went ahead of Jacob with the gifts. And then we get to our scripture today. Jacob ended up spending the night at camp alone. And as we heard in scripture today, sometime during the night in the pitch black darkness, Jacob felt a strong hand grip him and a wrestling match ensued. No lighthearted um, tussle. It was an all-out, sweaty, strenuous, furious fight. You're a wrestler. Can you imagine? Are you, can you think of a wrestling match where it was just, I mean, most of them are like that, right? It's just all in, all the time. The whole time you're wrestling, it's go. Your body is straining. Your body is, is um, working against that other one. If your brother was here, I was going to have you come up here and demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> or Braden, he could have wrestled with you. Wrestling is, is it's, I mean, I, most of us don't know what that's like, what wrestling. 
but I've heard people describe it. I've heard men describe that wrestling, and it's, it's your body is being taxed at all times during that match. There's no ease in it. But in truth, we know that this wasn't the first wrestling match Jacob had taken part in. He had wrestled the birthright from his brother. He had wrestled the blessing from his father, but now he wrestled someone new. And at first, he had no idea who it was. The struggle continued until close to dawn or at the beginning of daybreak, and the man saw that Jacob was not giving up, so he put Jacob's hip out of socket, with a t- out of joint, what they touch. And Jacob began to, began to realize that he was not just fighting a normal man, not just a man. Jacob began to realize his opponent was someone else. Apparently, his pro- opponent was strong enough to have won the struggle at any moment but he chose not to. And as the morning began to break, it began to dawn on Jacob just who his wrestling opponent was. That hunch was was confirmed when the man said, let me go for the day has broken, because Jacob knew that no human could see the face of God and live, and that warning convinced him. He realized that his adversary was no mere man, but God himself in human form. Now let me explain. There's a word, theophany, and it means an appearance of God to humans. Reverend Dr. Vern Poitras defines it this way. A theophany is an appearance of God an intense manifestation or display of the presence of God that is accompanied by an extraordinary visual display. A theophany can happen in many ways. Moses and the burning bush. God appeared to humanity in thunderstorms and clouds in smoke and pillars of fire as a man, as a warrior. The Old Testament theophanies foreshadow or predict the coming of Christ in the flesh. The main point of a theophany, the main point is to know that God is present with humanity, that God is present with us. That presence is ultimately expressed through Christ. So once Jacob realized who he was wrestling with, he asked for his blessing. He didn't blame God. He didn't get angry with God. He stepped back and said, give me your blessing. And God said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Does that speak to you at all? Have you struggled with God? Have you struggled with humans? Have you overcome? If so, you are living in triumph and your name has been changed. You are child of God. As the sun came up, Jacob went away limping because of his hip And this is what we learn. This is the message we learn. Sometimes, in order for God to have our full surrender, it requires a divine dislocation of whatever it is that makes us strong. Sometimes, in order to have, for God to have our full surrender, it requires the divine location, dislocation of whatever it is that we think makes us strong. He takes that which we believe that makes us strong, separates us from that, so that Christ's strength can shine through our weaknesses. Jacob may have lost that wrestling match with God, but his loss was actually his greatest victory. We may feel as if we've lost the wrestling match with God. 
However, when wrestling with God, our loss means his victory. And his victory is the greatest victory of all. And maybe there's some of you who have no idea what I'm even talking about. Maybe you're like, I don't understand what all this wrestling with God means. <laughs> you're thinking, well, this happened to Jacob, but what does that have to do with me? If you feel you have not wrestled with God, or that you're not currently wrestling with God, perhaps you just didn't recognize him as your wrestling opponent. You may have thought it was your conscience, your parents, your spouse, your family, your children, your friends, your pastor. When you're holding on to something that stands in the way of your total surrender to God, he will wrestle you for it. And he is free to use whatever and whoever he chooses. Many times we think we're fighting between the bad me and the good me. But in fact, we're fighting, we're wrestling with between sin and the one who will take away our sin. So why does God wrestle us? Why didn't he just take it away? I don't want this, take it. Well, if we're honest, <laughs> deep down we like that sin. It feels good. It's why we did it in the first place. It's why we do it now. We're used to it. It's comfortable. We're not ready to give it up. We may, may not like the consequences of it. What we may not realize is that the biggest consequence of our sin is that it leaves us spiritually dead because it creates separation between God and us. In your conversion, as we talked about last week, in your submission, your complete surrender to God, he will wrestle away from you what holds you captive. And we can no longer say that that's just the way I am. It's just what I do. It's the way I've always been. Because God will take that sin and wrestle it away. Some matches have been known to last years. Depends on how tightly we hold on to it. Our loss is God's victory. His victory means we are no longer separated from him. So it is up to us as to how difficult that wrestling match with God is. Does that make sense? how difficult that wrestling match is depend on how easily we give in to his victory. Because here's a truth you can be sure of. God does not desire separation from you. God wants you, not just a part of you, he wants all of you. And about that reunion with Jacob and Esau, Esau did come with his 400 men. He saw Jacob. He left those men and went running to his brother, and they embraced, and they wept. Folks, when we wrestle with God, our lives are never the same after. Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we close. Catchy little song. I think you may have heard it before. Let's sing it. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the cross. Heaven.
every round goes higher, higher. Every round goes higher, higher. Every round goes higher, higher. Soldiers of the cross, sinners, do you love my Jesus? Sinner, do you love my Jesus? Sinner, do you love my Jesus? Soldiers of the cross, if you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why not serve him? Soldiers of the cross, and we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Oh, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldiers of the cross. Amen. If you want to read that part of Jacob. That is, um, goes back to the first, dream, the first time that he encountered God and when he made that, that vow that started with if. But this is what happened. He saw a ladder going to heaven. So Genesis is full of fabulous stories that will keep your attention. Get, get past chapter one and keep reading. It's very interesting. You know, if you want, you can, I know you're not going to want to, but if you want, you could turn to each other and sing this song, okay? Thanks for coming. We'll see you next week.